So hi there everyone this is me uh, Dr Vishal Koshik and I am once again back with one more video and this time it's going to be uh, in one of my playlist called as plant physiology today we are talking about the signaling of a very important hormone called as presinosteroid and students have requested this thing several times and I I'm going to upload this video as of now now as the name indicates presinosteroid let's try to decode that thing so uh, the presinosteroid are the only steroid hormone in plants and uh, they were for the first time isolated from pollen grain of a plant called as brassica napus and therefore the word brassica is actually deriving the word uh, brassino brassa brassa word from that and steroidal nature so it combines to form the word called as presinosteroid so from brassica and steroidal in nature therefore called as presinosteroid so let's start quickly with the signaling mechanism and today we are going to start about that now when the question comes about any kind of signaling the signaling is going to involve a receptor and that's the first question so the receptor in this case is known by the name of bri1 that is brassinosteroid insensitive one and the very next question comes to our mind is that what is the nature of this receptor it's a plasma membrane bound receptor which i'll be showing you in the coming images so brassinosteroid signaling receptor is basically bound to the plasma membrane of the plant cell which i'm going to show you a little bit later on and the thing is another important feature of the bri1 receptor and it has been asked in all competitive examinations is that it contains lrr the full form of lrr is leucine rich repeat receptor kinase and as i've indicated on the screen that lrr is an extracellular domain that means it is present in the membrane but it is actually above the part of the membrane which is not transmembrane not in, uh, in intracellular basically just above it that is extracellular domain we'll be seeing that thing just don't worry about that now the next thing is the brassinosteroid receptor or the bri receptor is present uh, on the receptor in in the manner which is being shown onto the screen and we are going to have a look at the detailed structure of this receptor so the receptor as i told you it contains an extracellular domain as you can see in the image that it is the yellow colored part which is known as lrr and the lrr are usually individual yellow dashed line which i have indicated it is basically uh, uh, an lrr over here and there are usually 1 to 25 lrr as represented here and between the lrr number 21 and 22 as you can see there is a specific domain called as the island domain now this island domain is the main site where brassinosteroid is going to land actually it's the brassinosteroid binding site so that becomes the next question for our examination just below that in blue colored rectangle you can see there is a transmembrane domain because it is exactly fitted within the uh, uh, do, uh, within the plasma membrane uh, lipid bilayer and then towards the inner side we have another domain called as the juxta membrane domain now the thing is juxta membrane domain is the part which is uh, just connecting the transmembrane domain towards the cytosolic part of, uh, of the plasma membrane bound portion and that next domain is called as the kinase domain which is actually representing the c terminal domain as indicated in the figure now this kinase domain has some properties specific for tyrosine serine and threonine kinase activities that is another important question asked in your examination so from n terminal to c terminal you can see we have three domains basically the lrr in fact four sorry so lrr transmembrane domain the juxta membrane domain a small connecting link between the uh, transmembrane and the kinase domain and then in fact towards the c terminal domain we have the kinase domain now is the time to look at onto the signaling mechanism so the signaling mechanism obviously signaling of any hormone has to be understood in two different manner one is when the hormone is absent that is there is no brassinosteroid obviously as the name indicates when no brassinosteroid is there there will be no signaling there will be no activity of brassinosteroid associated genes so we are going to understand that part first and then we will understand in presence of brassinosteroid so when brassinosteroid is not there what is actually suppressing the activity of the cytosolic or the nuclear uh, genes which are the brassinosteroid activity genes and how they are actually shut down so let's have a look at that so in absence of brassinosteroid you can say the island domain is empty there is no brassinosteroid bound to that now there comes the first villain of our story which is a protein or a, or a basically a cytosolic protein called as bki1 
so as you can see i have indicated with the with the with the way i have indicated the horns over bki1 it's a villain in our story so uh, it's an inhibitor of signaling obviously when no brassinosteroid is bound to the receptor then this bki1 which is revolving somewhere in cytosol it goes and binds to the kinase domain and shuts off the activity of the kinase domain now if the kinase domain is shut down the entire receptor is inactive there can be no activity of the receptor that means the receptor is actually shut off because no brisinosteroid was found and therefore bki1 decided okay i will shut down the kinase domain but is this bki1 the only villain in our story no that is not the case bki1 has one more friend who is going to shut down the signaling in the nucleus and that friend is known by the name of pin2 protein as you can see that is another mischievous friend i have indicated over here so bin2 is a cytosolic repressor of signaling now this repressor has tremendous potential this repressor can enter into the nucleus and actually shut down the brassinosteroid genes which we are going to just have a look at so bki1 takes care of the receptor it actually shuts down the receptor activity and there's another protein called as bin2 which is saying okay i will help you to shut down the nuclear activity that is the brassinosteroid genes i will shut it down for you now how does bin2 actually shuts down the nuclear activity of the genes so this bin2 is always having phosphorylated status as you can see i've shown multiple p symbols on this bin2 in white which is showing that this bin2 protein is in an active state when it is having the phosphorylated status now this bin2 in its phosphorylated state or an active state is going to enter into the nucleus in the nucleus there are two activators of signaling called as bes1 and bzr1 i repeat there are two activators shown in green circles called as bes1 and bzr1 which were normally very happy in their own lifestyle but suddenly a villain comes into the nucleus called as bin2 and this bin2 kind of adds an inhibitory phosphate over both these activators called as bes1 and bzr1 now these phosphate have been shown in red over those green activators now is the sad part of the story that once those inhibitory phosphate has been added over those activators the activators are going to be degraded via 26s proteasome activity now this kind of activity is commonly taught in molecular biology you must be familiar with that i will be taking 26s proteasome somewhere in mol bio later on but the sad part of the story is that the activators are degraded obviously if the activators are degraded no promoter activity no promoter activity means gene shut down and that finally means no signaling which is a sad part of course so uh, moving ahead that how does the story actually move ahead we need to understand how in presence of brassinosteroid this entire signaling will be activated let's have a look at that so in presence of brassinosteroid i have shown that the brassinosteroid molecule binds to the island domain now the island domain is occupied by brassinosteroid the binding of brassinosteroid on to the extracellular lrr region specifically at the island domain site it causes a conformational change now the conformational change happens in the receptor as such as a result of which the kinase domain autophosphorylated cell which is the step number 1 and this autophosphorylation results in throwing away of the bki1 inhibitor from the c terminal kinase domain i repeat brassinosteroid binds conformational change the kinase domain autophosphorylated cell and then this autophosphorylation leads to throwing away of the bki1 inhibitor now one part of the villain is killed but who takes care of the second villain in this scenario called as the bin2 we need to take care of that also because it was running towards the nucleus and actually shutting off the signaling pathway so let's try to understand that story so first part of the story is clear and bki1 inhibitor has been successfully removed very good and now we need to take care of the another villain that has been to now <clears throat> apart from separating the bki1 this phosphorylated kinase domain actually kind of phosphorylates another membrane bound protein but that membrane bound protein is towards the uh, cytosolic side of the plasma membrane and that protein is called as bsk1 that is very near to this uh, plasma membrane bound receptor but i have shown it now it was always present there right so this bsk1 is actually going to get phosphorylated by the autophosphorylation of kinase domain so this is one more event happening there right now the bsk1 gets activated now what is bsk1 going to do once it gets activated this bsk1 in turn activates a cytosolic phosphatase called as bsu1 consider it as like this that bsu1 was revolving in the cytosol it goes in contact with the bsk1 
If it was phosphorylated, then this protein also becomes active. Now, BSU1, which is a cytosolic phosphatase, now becomes active. And what does phosphatase actually do? It removes the phosphate. Now, this phosphatase will act upon the BIN2, which was already revolving in the cytosol in a phosphorylated state and causing problems for us, right? So, this BIN2, which is phosphorylated and was active, its phosphate has been actually removed by the BSU1 phosphatase. Now, both the villains are inactive. BKI1 was removed and BIN2 lost its phosphate. So, what is going to happen? That's the good part of the story. Now, both the activators are celebrating. They are having a a uh, good time inside the nucleus because bin2 cannot enter into the nucleus so best one and bzr1 which were actually the activators of signaling they are now active and once they are active they activate the promoter promoter activate the brassinosteroid genes and the signaling is switched on and this is a happy news i hope you like this video this was a short video which i've just shot for you and i'll be bringing a more interesting content for you thanks for watching have a great time so hi students, I hope that you like this video and uh, please stay in touch, stay tuned and spread this video to more and more students. I will be bringing up more content for you. Have a good day, take care and please do subscribe to my channel.